kadang-kadang uh, perawat itu tidak ramah. Itu kenapa perawat tidak ramah? Kalau menurut saya, ya mungkin. Uh, so the nurses are not that friendly. Why are they not friendly? Maybe because they have many problems at home. Their salaries may not be enough. So how can they smile? I think the chief should pay attention, meaning the incentive and salary should be increased so that they could work better here. That is what I hope. The head of nursing at Zainal El Abedin, Nolela Hassan, agrees. But she admits that three out of five members of her staff are failing to provide adequate care to patients, and the doctor's absence only adds to this problem. They don't show enough initiative. They wait for instructions. They don't know what there is to do. For example, they come and they ask the head of the section what there is to do. Then she says, change the bandages. So they do it. They always need instructions from the doctors. They don't exercise their autonomy, but in cases where they depend on somebody else, their work is okay. Dr. Roos doesn't have the authority to hire or fire the staff, as they are civil servants, working officially for the government, not the hospital. His scope to provide incentives to improve performance is limited. Dr. Roos has the full backing of Gerard Survey of GTZ as he presses the government for more autonomy. One of the members of parliament they are lobbying is Ibrahim Sali. Ibrahim Sali, head of Aceh's health commission, believes that the recent change in status of the hospital from general to public will help solve the problem of low morale and slack management. Before, when the hospital was still general, they could only follow the proposals they had submitted. They couldn't do much outside of the proposal submitted. For instance, the budget for the nurses could not be allocated to doctors. The budget for the doctors could not be allocated for the nurses. The budget for the garden could not be allocated for something else. This is what happened to their budget before. But in the future, if the hospital becomes a public one, if there's a broken door, they could fix it without any planning. They won't need to have already written it down in the budget proposal. But Ibrahim Saleh adds that with the new public status, accountability of their spending will be of primary importance. That is why GTZ is introducing a computerized accounting and billing system to the hospital. It's a first step, but it will not solve the underlying problem, rock-bottom salaries. These are still set by the government. Ibrahim Saleh's message to the staff at Zainu El Abedin is clear. In return for more funds, they will have to provide a better service. So you can ask for much more money. <laughs> I think you have everything here you need to improve the quality of the service. We want more money for the functioning. We want more money to, to pay the incentive. We want more money to buy the drugs for the patient. We want more money to, uh, to repair the medical equipment. To give you an example, if uh, the X-ray machine is broken today, then the hospital has to make a formal request to the government to get it repaired, to get the spare parts. And sometimes the spare parts will take uh, six months to, to, be, to, to come in the hospital. And during six months, it will be no X-ray in the hospital. So with, with a system like that, it cannot work. Even if greater autonomy enables the quality of healthcare to improve at Zaino El Abedin, it will take time and more than just money to restore people's faith. Even before the tsunami, the absenteeism and malfunctioning equipment had sapped people's faith in their hospital. Those that could afford it made a beeline to neighboring Malaysia for treatment, and they still do. Sharifa Wayuni had complications during the birth of her son. After three consultations at the hospital, she finally decided to go to Penang in Malaysia. Her father, a retired nurse, is appalled by the state of the health services in Aceh. We only want doctors to work according to the procedures, according to their oath. Every doctor and every nurse is bound to this oath. 
Some patients are seriously ill in the general hospital and they are not being treated because of lack of resources. So where is this medical oath? The oath is for doctors and nurses to take care of the sick. But when you give money in advance, then help comes quickly. It is Sunday and the idyllic beaches are empty. The sea here is synonymous with death. But for Saeed, it has retained its mystique. He used to come here with his family. Even during the months after the tsunami, I went to the sea, in the mornings and the evenings, because watching the sea calms me. 